Hey, welcome to the Tim and Gugabe podcast. This is your host, Tim. And Gugabe, how are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I've got access to my computer, which makes that one of us. Yeah, I'm recording on my iPhone today because my computer is having issues. But um, I guess we won't recap the previous card. I don't know. It wasn't that exciting. And this card's actually not bad, so we can just probably get right into it. I know it's kind of late in the week, so we should just try to get this out. But um, first fight of the night, uh, let's you know, go. Yeah, best fight odds order is uh, Max Roscoff and Austin Hubbard. Your thoughts? I'm kind of surprised Rob's Cop is this big a favorite. Like, I can, I can see the path to victory, but, like, he is 5 0. He's in on, like, what, 10 days' notice. Yeah. He's posted, he's injured, and hasn't been training. And, like, you know, Hubbard, Hubbard's not get, never going to be ranked or anything, but he is, like, legitimately hard out. Yeah. Um, like, he's not, inc- he's not incompetent, put it that way. Yeah, pretty much my read is I think. Max is wrestling. He's like a pretty good wrestler. He wasn't an all American or anything, but he's he's pretty good. And his tape, it looks like tenacious wrestling, but it's it's a, it's it's really hard to get a read on something like that, you know? Because I so I feel like even the books probably don't know what this line should actually be, you know? Like I don't think anyone does. Like I, I feel like it's almost kind of guessing. Um it's it's almost like I mean it's not a complete comparison, but it's almost like Hooper's grappling, working, you know, previously against lower level competition, then it wasn't as effective when it came to the UFC. And I, I, I kind of expect, I mean, Max is obviously has like a much better background than Hooper, but I don't know. It's just, I expect Hubbard to survive, you know? So like, there's going to be questions if you're betting max here that you really don't know and that are probably going to get answered type of thing and i I wouldn't want to figure that out at like minus 185 you know so i I think it's dogger pass personally yeah pretty much my view i got on the under pretty early but i've since hedged it off i got like i got like minus 105 on the under i've sent i just hedged it off at plus 120 i just like rose cop sub one's probably a decent outcome here but also hubbard just kicking the shit shit out of them wouldn't shock me like, Rose Cop just seems very raw in terms of striking defense. And, like, even for when I could see him as wrestling, he seemed more like one of these sort of, like, counter scrambly guys than really guys just out there putting out massive double legs or anything like that. He had one fight where, yeah, I saw that in a few fights where he kind of just sprawled and would, like, do front headlocks and counters and things like that. I saw one fight where it, like, looked decent, you know, but it, it's still, it, it's hard to read when you're going against guys who aren't that good, you know, it just, it just is, that's how it is. But, um, like, I kind of see it as a thing where I could see anything from like Hubbard looking like a favorite to Max looking like a bigger favorite than he is, you know, like I could just see a wide range of shit happening here. Yeah, like, I had the same opinion of Hooper Cacheras, where it's like, you know, I could see either Hooper or Cacheras going to come out of that fight looking Mars 300. Yeah. Like it's yeah. it's really just a binary question of all. It's it's two questions, I guess. It's how dumb does Roshikov's grappling and how long does Gas Tank last? And if it's, yeah, it's dumb enough, it doesn't matter. I think the cardio is the main thing. Like like if it if it's really really good, um, he probably wins. To be honest, you know. But if it's it, it, it's hard to know, and and um, you can't just look at like old wrestling footage and figure out cardio because it's just it's different. Like the fifteen minutes is. Um, an MMA fight, seven minutes is a wrestling match, and just different energy systems. You know, it, it's just a little different. So I don't know. Um, I I could just see. I have no idea what the line should be. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I I understand why you would want to err on the dog. Um, but yeah. who knows? Who knows? Honestly, what happens? I've got about a year and a half on Hubbard plus one sixty. Um, I just. I think there's a bunch of stuff the market's been a bit or is historically been overly optimistic about and what Roscop does. Yeah. Like there's just a bunch of factors here. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm again it's it's coming from a point of ignorance, but I'd rather be ignorant on the plus one sixty than ignorant on the master hundred. Yeah, that's fair. Like it's fine to like admit you don't really know what the line should be, but you're willing to just like you're willing to be on the the dog, you know, because you just there's more room for error, you know. Um and just what Hubbard does as a fight, like he, he's never going to be a world beater, but he puts uh, he's got great cardio. He doesn't stop trying. He seems tough. You know, there's just a bunch of attributes in him that I like using to fight people. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, it's you're like not, I just don't think this kid's gonna. I just don't think Max will finish him right away. Personally, like I, I like I just feel like like Hubbard's tough and durable, and I feel like his like sub defense. I mean, if you can survive Ramos for 15 minutes, I feel like. I mean, it, I just feel like he's more than likely to survive here, you know. Um, but who knows? But generally, like every fight, he's shown adjustments. He's shown great toe, tempo. He's shown solid cardio. He seems tough as fuck. So it's like I'm not saying he's well better, but yeah, it just attributes that it's tough to be fine facing if facing a sex professional fight. Like Spots from yeah. Cop just comes out here and guillotines him in a minute, and it's like, all right. That's that's fair enough, but like that's pretty much the only way I see I can see Rojkov justifying the line. Like I mean, Selecki was booked against him. Selecki was a small favorite, and like Selecki probably has a lower ceiling than Rojkov, but also his floor is a lot higher. Yeah, that's pretty much how I see it. Like I honestly wouldn't be like surprised if Max just even won a dominant decision. Like I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just looked super raw couldn't hold top position easily and then just kind of gets like tired starts shooting bad shots and kind of just gets outstruck you know like i wouldn't be surprised on that either so I, it just just kind of is what it is i feel like we're saying the same thing but I, I i personally don't think the risk is worth it for max but who knows you know um, yeah pretty much uh roxanne and murphy i sort of lean murphy here like nothing that i'm gonna play i think this is kind of meme shit but uh I feel like she should have the striking edge and um, I don't know. It's like, can Roxanne get a couple takedowns and hold top position long enough? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, pretty much. I took some Murphy plus one, two, five a while ago, just because I just price was coming down to other books. I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Every, everywhere, else plus one, everywhere else is plus one, five. And I was like, oh, plus one, two, five. I'll take it. Probably edging it at this point. Like, yeah, I can make a free. I can make a free hundred, hundred bucks or so. I can make a free yeah, eight unit or so off it. So I'm just kind of like, Murphy's probably the right side, but also I don't really have a strong enough conviction. Yeah, I, I don't like how she played guard a lot against Eubanks, but she's also like, I feel like in that fight she was just getting her ass kicked everywhere to where she started playing like rubber guard and shit like that. Um, also just but, using sort of inside. Oh, yeah, jumping He's finding using insight from um say what was uh, the Cavio last week like in women's MMA I kind of think the top control wind path can be just worth more than the sort of outstriking wind path just because when you know Moldaferi does get a takedown she probably holds it for a bit and like it's like Murphy's going bombing her yeah. on the feet yeah 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 um yeah and it's definitely like enough of a threat to where if you don't feel strongly about Murphy just kind of like pass you know like I I, I kind of had a feeling I was going to win last week, but I also respected the takedown, you know, like just like how one takedown could end anything that I had accomplished in the first two minutes of a round, you know? Or even like women's on even like three minutes, like, you know, at least men's or something, you've got that bigger, you got, you got the KO chance, which is kind of gone in women's. And just generally, you've also got, so you just got that sense of, um, yeah, it's just a takedown in women's could just overall oh, shit, shit, in my opinion. Oh, for sure, definitely, and and um, you can just land more damaging shots on the on the mat for a woman too. You know, like yeah. you, yeah, like you, you can just really, like, I don't know. I just feel like in striking, it's like, like I and Cavillo weren't hitting any hitting each other with anything where I was like, oh, that's really gonna, you know, um, really have like an impact in the judges' minds. But whenever Cavillo was landing shots on the ground, you were like, oh fuck. Like it actually looks damaging. I feel, um, but yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I kind of think, eh, I think it's a pass personally. Um, I kind of lean Murphy, but I do respect the the whole grappling thing. I think Murphy could land a takedown or two as well. Just probably not hold top position. Hundred um, percent. Like I think it would just be a close, crappy fight. Like Murphy's probably got the standing edge and the clinch edge, but like, yeah, who knows. I, I do just before we and I do kind of like Lauren Murphy more than others. I, I just feel like she's not bad, and I don't know. Some people just kind of think she's awful, but I don't know. I feel like she's competed in pretty much every fight except Eubanks. You know, um, like she took McMahon to a split decision, but um, but I don't know. Oh well, uh, Camacho and James. I haven't taped James. Have you? Uh, briefly. 
swinger, um, hasn't been knocked out, shit defense, decent power, but like, I don't know, nothing about his power looks like massive to me. I'm not playing Camacho at minus 430 against anybody. Like, I mean, so minus 330 against anybody, because Camacho is just too prone to get into a war, but Camacho should get into a stupid war and should win it. Yeah, he gets hit too much. Yeah, like, this will probably be a swing match for seven minutes or so. Camacho probably wins off a combination of size, power, experience, yeah, 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 but, like, there's going to be at least one hairy moment, moment in that six minutes. Yeah, no, I, no, I feel you. I, I think that's pretty much all we have to say. Like, I, I think I took a look at Gene's, like, one fight. It, it, he's a wrestler a little bit, too, right? Um, but I don't know. I, Sometimes, but, yeah. yeah. He just, he reminds me, like, remember Christian, Christian Aguilera from last week? Yeah. Kind of the same archetype. Like, gotcha. Competent, bit small for the vision. Like, he just, he's not bad. But he just, I just don't think he, he, has, he just doesn't have much business in the UFC. But if he's, if he is going to win a UFC fight, it's going to be a meme, like sub five minute KO against Frank Camacho. He's like respectable regional to low UFC, like floating around pretty much. It sounds like. Yeah, he's a sort of dude that if, if I could trust Camacho to follow an actual game plan, I'd be like, all right, Camacho can just make him look like an idiot. But like, just knowing who Frank Camacho is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, uh, Robertson and and Casey. This is an interesting fight. I uh, I did like a breakdown on this. I kind of just think like I'm okay with the line, I guess, because Casey. I mean, she's probably going to get taken down here at some point, you know. Um, but at the same time, I just don't like. Is Robertson just? I, I don't think she can finish Casey. Like Casey has an actual good guard for women's MMA. I know we give sh- shit to women's MMA for like guard subs and stuff, but just as far as like retention, she has a really tight guard. And I just feel like Robertson doesn't really throw ground and pound, so I kind of just like uh, you know. Uh, I guess that's kind of like the trouble I'm seeing. It's like I think both girls can get their games going, but also both girls. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like Casey's going to get taken down. So that's not good. But I feel like Robertson's just going to kind of lay on top of her because Casey's only allowed seven passes on 20 takedowns in the UFC, you know? Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, at evens, I'll just lean the person who's probably going to be on top. Yeah. But like, yeah, not playing it. Like, Robertson's athletically not great. Um, Casey's probably... Casey sure would win if it ever stayed in the feet for a particularly protracted amount of time. Which which it could randomly if just Robertson yeah. just I don't know. Like Calvillo, Casey's takedown defense is awful statistically, but Calvillo went 0 for six. So like I expect Robertson to get takedowns, but there are times in this fight where there could be like three minutes on the feet straight, you know, and that's not good for Robertson. Yeah, like honestly it's a very similar dynamic to Murphy Molliferi in a lot of ways. A little bit, yeah. I think the striking is probably a bigger mismatch here, though. But, yeah, I mean, um, like in terms of like Casey slash Murphy, yeah, kind of has a striking, yeah. Drops and kind of has a top top position yeah. grappling thing. Um, yeah. yeah, Casey seems competent. I just I can't really give a shit. Like Robertson, I, I know when I when I bet on Robertson, when I bet against Robertson, this isn't really a spot for either of those. Yeah, yeah. Like Robertson, you kind of know when you kind of know when to better and not. I feel. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of feel like, I just feel like, uh, I think I lean Casey simply like, and usually I'm always about the top person, you know, but the reason I kind of lean Casey, I would not play her though, because she's going to get taken down is when I just don't think Robinson's going to finish her. And then over the course of 15 minutes, I just feel like I don't, I like, I don't, trust Robertson you know like I just feel like Casey will kind of like put her in danger at some point but I don't know who the fuck knows uh yeah going maybe to the... over here yeah 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 I could what like a minus 140 for women for women's MMA over I mean Robertson's have been like a fairly consistent finisher but still yeah I'm more worried about Robertson what's what scorecards no action like I think Casey scorecards no action is like you wouldn't think it, but I just, I just don't think Robertson can finish Casey. I, I, I really don't. Uh, just Casey, because... Casey into NSA is actually minus one fifty. I'm, I'm surprised by that. 
like I, I just uh I don't know like I know that's how Robertson wins but that's also like Molly McCann and shit like P- like Casey has an actual guard and I like Cla- Claudia Gardelia got two passes on six takedowns you know like I, I just feel like e- even even Macedo who's awful with guard retention survived for a really long time and I just I feel like Casey's actually good when it comes to a bottom player but uh I don't know. Who knows? I'm. I'm just. It's a weird fight. Um, yeah. Just very looking for props. I feel like Robertson KOs round league. Like people are acting like her having elbows or something when she hurt throw. Did she like cut? She landed like three elbows and throw to and her, her face exploded. It was kind of a high rolls sort of situation, in my opinion. But anyway. Yeah, for sure. And and it was like all from crucifix and mount. And I I just. I could see her passing guard occasionally here. I just don't think it's going to happen a lot. And I, I think it's going to happen less than she usually does. Um, yeah. P- Pachota and, and Barriolt, uh, I kind of just feel like I trust the guy who won't collapse here, Barriolt. Like, I, I yeah. know that's not scientific, but that's pretty much what I think. Yeah, like I've, I've written this in multiple write ups. Um, Pay Piotr versus a man who will still be, be there after seven minutes. Not not a favorable matchup. Yeah, I've got some under two and a half. I got pretty. I got on pretty early, so like plus one twenty. Now it's like minus one forty. Yeah, uh, I got some barrier. I've got some PO to sub one. I've got some barrier KO two, KO three. Just late rounds of barrier. Yeah, just yeah, PO to just will collapse if barrier insists on existing at him. Yeah, that's um, pretty much what I think. It's nothing I want to. It's nothing I'm like passionate about because I don't think either guy's very good. Um, but yeah. if I was forced to play, I'd probably play Barrios here. I've I've bet against Barrios. I'm actually betting on Barrios small, but like, just I've bet, I've bet against Barrios every fight so far. Like I, I'm free and over fading him, but I don't, I don't think he's awful. Like he, he's been in every one of his UFC fights. Yeah, I mean he fought Joko and Sanchez tough, honestly. I, I still don't get how Joko was a split decision because I just felt like Joko kind of just. There, there was tiny margins, but there still was a clear margin every round. But yeah, Sanchez was tough, and Park was tough too. Like, you know, he's, he's generally just been hard. He's, he's not, he's not going to go on a fucking crazy run to the title or anything, but he's like an Austin Hubbard sort of figure where you've got to beat him 15 minutes. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, and, you know, Piotr just... Piotr, the cardio falls out of his body at 7 minutes, and yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um... Van Buren and Torres. Um, I think Van Buren. I was like interested in playing her for line was a little better. I think she should probably win, but um, I think minus two twenty five is kind of. I mean, she might justify that line honestly because I just don't see what Torres can do here to win clearly ever. Like she could win a split decision. I get that, but I just don't. I I just feel like her ceiling is very very low. Where Van Buren has a high ceiling, where like I could see Van Buren winning thirty twenty seven with just takedowns and things like that. Um, yeah, what do you think? Pretty much, um, I just saw the line. I was like, eh, I can't really bother putting much further look into this Torres it's ways of completely winning fights. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's like Van Buren. If she attempted more takedowns, I. Would like if she attempted 10 takedowns per 15 minutes, I would be willing, maybe not anymore, but like I would have maybe been willing to play that like minus 180 or something. But I, I like checked her fights and she attempts more like six takedowns per 15 minutes if you tally up her Invicta and everything. And although she has like a high takedown percentage, I do think Torres will be a little harder to take down than her other opponents, but I still expect them to land. And so like, I would want more attempts, you know, but I don't know. That's kind of the way I see it. it I don't know. Um, what's her decision line? My, uh, minus minus one sixty. Mm. Honestly, probably better than her money line. Cause I just don't see how this doesn't go to the cards. Points handicap might be worth it too. Right, let's see. We'll see whatever it lands at. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Guida and Green. Oh God! Um, <laughs> Guida's gonna win this split decision while Green makes uh, Green will win three minutes in this fight in incredible fashion and spend the upper twelve minutes 
um, making faces at the judges whilst pushed up against a cage or something. Just because that's how Bobby Green rolls. Yeah, I just see. I I will defend him a little bit if you if it's kind of. He has like an interesting run. He's like the opposite of Tyron Woodley. Like he has a bunch of losses in a row where he like had process during the fights, but he just kind of didn't get some decisions, you know, where I feel like Woodley had a run where he had no process and randomly just won. <laughs> um, but uh, I always bring everything back to Woodley, but I just feel like Green, I don't know, in, in his like run where he's lost, but what, what hasn't, he, hasn't he like lost four fights in a row? Like what what's going on here? He I beat, believe so. Well, he I beat mean, Cook actually, so I I forget. Let me check. Yeah, I I I played Draco. I played him very hard against Draco close, and I'm still annoyed about that decision. Yeah, it's, I, he should have won. He should understand. have won that decision. <laughs> no, he should have yeah. won that. That was a bad decision. Um, I had no money on that. And yeah, like if you look, he's. Like his metrics are really good. That's the thing, you know. Like he outstruck Trinaldo, and he MMA decisions had Green winning that fight. MMA decisions had Green beating close, and he kind of dominated Eric Cook. Had a draw against Venata, and then he had like a close decisions to Edson and Maga Madoff. It's like. With that quality of competition, I would expect him to kind of be about 500, and that's probably where he should be, you know? So, I don't know. Like, I just feel like he's kind of... I don't really think it's entirely his fault. I think he's kind of just got fucked, too, you know? And, oh, he, yeah, sure. and, and I just feel like Guida... I just don't see where Guida wins the fight. Like, I just feel like Green's going to win clear. Um, I know... Enthusiasm. Yeah, I, I, I know, but I, I feel like in like having a... Your enthusiasm matters when it's like a comp, you know, when your competition's good. I just feel like I just like dude. Guida had he bare he struggled against BJ Penn in 2019. <laughs> so and like he he dropped the first round unanimously. Like I don't know. I just feel like Green's a better wrestler. He's a way better striker. He lands higher. He's bigger. He's younger. Um. I'm not saying I'm going to fucking throw the house on green at minus 250, but if this line improved in some way, I would honestly be interested. I, I just don't, I just don't see how Guida wins. And I just feel like green being lazy or something is kind of a narrative argument. I, I like, I feel like he's fought fine in his fights. It's just the competition's good and they were close fights, you know? I do feel like he, he just tends to lack a bit of hustle. Just, I know obviously he's kind of got fucked on the decisions, but also he could probably do a bit more just generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see what Like, but, against close, like, he got fucked against close, but still, like, even, and, you know, actually looking at his UFC record, like, that's pretty much all good names. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, even it, his win streak to start off. Yeah, and th that's the thing. He had, he won like seven fights in a row, and the one guy he fought, Eric Cook, who none of the other guys he lost to, I would put Guida even near, you know? Um, and everyone he's beaten, he's kind of like, he didn't have any hustle issue. He was just like, he just beat him, you know, like, like Eric Cook, I wouldn't say he had a hustle issue. He was just better and fucked him up. And I feel like that's going to happen here, but, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong and <laughs> maybe he just, I don't know, but he just always lands a lot of strikes and I feel like, like he's lost to Edson, Poirier, Maga Madoff. Draw against Venata, lost to Cro Close and Trinaldo, and he probably should have won like three of those fights. And I just feel like it was more so they were close fights, and he happened to not get the nod. I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm ranting at this point, but um, yeah. I'm just defending I him a little more. I, I don't th than other people. Yeah, I agree. Like if he was minus one, if he was at evens, I'd be jumping on him. But just probably yeah. green at minus two fifty. I'm just yeah. there's just. I've got I mean, too much scarring from betting on him in the past. Yeah, I mean, I guess the odds are kind of reflecting what I'm saying anyway, you know, that he's a pretty sizable favorite, so I'm just kind of defending the guy. I feel like he gets a little too much shit, but I, I would still need a better line than that, but I, I yeah, I think Green's gonna win. He's um, a good fighter, just Mario 250's approaching, the Green does something stupid. Yeah, um, I, 
I do, I do feel you in in that respect. Uh, Miller and Roberts. Um, uh, it's a weird fight. I also, I think this. I'm going like medium size and Miller. I think this is quite a favorable matchup. I just Roberts doesn't respond well to pressure. I'm, I'm shocked Roberts has gone from being like you know. I mean, so Miller's gone from like being a small dog to Holtzman, who are actually better than Roberts in a lot of ways, and just like, yeah. a worse stylistic matchup to being such a big dog against Roberts. Gambling markets kind of always overvalued Roberts, when I've seen. I think somebody must might, must love his height stats or something, or just like combination of height, tensu, and youth, and all that. People just like somebody's fading an algorithm somewhere, and Roberts just happens to be a perfect coincidence. It just happens to be the intersection point of a bunch of things that the market likes. Yeah, I just don't really see it. Like, I think Miller, a good chance Miller gets in his face, and yeah, I've ran one sub sort of deal. I don't, I don't like Roberts' defensive grappling once he's actually grounded. He can hit like decent um, snatch guillotines. I could see if it's like devolving into the same sort of shit fest that Yakov Lev devolved into. It's like Roberts works a high tempo, so I think even the gas tags are even as big a consideration as it could be. And yeah, I felt Miller actually looked good against Altman. Yeah, I um, I think Miller. I think it's close early, and I do trust Roberts. Even though Roberts doesn't push like a crazy pace, I do trust his gas tank later, though. You know? Um, I feel like if you want to play Roberts, just look to play him live, honestly. Because I expect it to kind of be competitive early, you know? Um, and, yeah. and you're probably I avoiding feel, the... I, I feel like Roberts kind of... he His hands have looked better, though. Like, I'm, I'm going to defend him there. I, I've kind of, like kind of talk down upon him as a uh, as a prospect at times i do think his hands are improving but i still do think he has some issues but um yeah Even like that... i don't know I, like i i also think roberts likes to get his subs and kind of likes to have that safety net and that might not be um i think him subbing miller will be kind of tough but i do think he could actually land takedowns on miller to be honest like i think they both can land takedowns on each other um, I think Miller's grappling game is a bit deeper in terms of actual like proper jiu-jitsu exchanges. Yeah. Um, like Robert, he just he's got tall man guillotines, but every time I've actually seen him like doing deep jiu-jitsu, I've just never really seen much I like. I could see him getting top position though, like later if if Miller's tired because um, Miller's kind of overrated as a defensive wrestler. He's he's not that good of a wrestler, um, defensively. Sure, but. I, I kind of think they're both like that. Like, I think they both can be taken down. Like, he, he, Roberts was taken down a lot by Pischel, remember? Yeah, Pischel kind of ran over him in the end. Also, Roberts' improvements. Like, he's improving his hands and all that, but I feel like he's kind of improving. He's not really rounding out. He's just kind of improving in the areas he's already good at. Yeah. Like, I, I still don't see much of a pressure response from him. I still don't. Like, even, like, uh, what's his name? Weaver kind of had success just running at him. Like the way yeah. Wave just pushed him into the fence for three minutes was kind of like, yeah, I mean, Wave didn't do anything else. But like, Wave still just had success just running at him. It's not a great look. Yeah. I just, uh, the only, I'm not playing this fight, but I think the, the, um, the hesitation I just have on Miller is just so many of his wins come in the first round, and he just doesn't really win fights if they go later, you know? And I do think Roberts is probably good enough to not get subbed right away. Um, so that's kind of my hesitation. Um, but but who knows? You know, that, I mean, that's again why I still think I still think Miller will be dangerous in the first round. Like he took round one versus Holtzman, um, and that's why I think like playing Roberts maybe kind of wait to see that what happens after round one type of thing, but. Like I, I don't, yeah. I don't mind the Miller um, punt either. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I do think Roberts is going to win. I, I guess is also what I'm trying to say. So I don't know. That's kind of the way I see it. I don't mind Roberts to like minus 140, 150 sort of level, but just I just do not see the minus 250 price. It's just fair enough. I, I, I don't mean necessarily even think he's like. I don't think he's in that hard sub. I think there's just holes. His entire game is just. He's improving what he's good at. Just, I still, every time he's compre- he's faced fresh, just had, he's just had a bunch of issues, and it's just, I just don't really think. Yeah, I mean, that could very well happen. Level. Yeah. I think when Miller's kind of been staring at the chaos lately, just kind of how he's fighting. Yeah. Like, you know, he, he does front up, he does throw from south southpaw stance, he just kind of just swings, and, yeah, again, it 
plus 200 and that's all fight. It's, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. Um, I feel you. Robert's feel you. KO could be worthwhile too. It's, 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 oh, plus 315? Nah, fuck that. <laughs> nah. I was hoping that like a Robert's KO would be like something really wide just because he hasn't necessarily gotten KOs. Yeah. Um, Muhammad and Good, this is a, no pun intended, but this is a really good fight. Um, I like, what do you think here? Um, I'd play it some Lime Good for decision fairly early at plus 500. I think this is going to be quite a tight fight, just generally. Yeah, agreed. Like, Muhammad probably volume edge, Good, um, probably damage power slash power edge. Um, Good probably will have the moments. I think Good's hard to wrestle, like the way Muhammad's good to try doing it. And, like, yeah, Muhammad's kind of like a hit build to go and get him. Yeah. Um, I do, th- like, I think the striking is going to be kind of close. Um, and then I do think if, I do think Bilal has the grappling upside here, but, um, and Good does give up his back, so I could see Bilal, like, getting in hooks, you know, and, and maybe getting some top time. I'm not saying, like, every fight he dominates with with top time, but I just could see him getting it in some fights. Like, I, I think he's just a good back taker, has good takedowns, and actually lands over two per 15 minutes. So I could just see that happening. So I think that's always, like, something you have to consider. And then on the feet, I just think it's going to be close. I, I don't have strong opinions on who's going to win on the feet. I, I do worry that like Bilal has always kind of struggled when he's gone against like really athletic guys so that kind of worries me a little bit but I mean he still beat Brown who has like an athletic advantage but that was kind of like a younger Randy Brown but I don't know I just kind of feel like I just feel like the feet's going to be close I I guess is what I'm trying to say and it kind of just depends on like if good hurts Muhammad which he could yeah Pretty much my view. Um, yeah. I'm expecting this a close decision. Like, I remember um, Muhammad first. Um, what's his name? Uh, he's old now. Um, Tim Means. That was just a race close. Uh, Muhammad, I expect Muhammad's intelligence a lot, but he's kind of lacking athleticism. I just think this thing Good's kind of big enough athlete. I just, I just think this is going to be quite a race if in either decision or sort of like finish sort of thing. Like, Good's probably got the finishing upside. Yeah. yeah. Like, not touching my lines, I got plus five hundred on the decision, which yeah, I think the over's probably a bit um actually over's gone hit. Well, that was like minus one forty a day or two ago. Yeah. Um Yeah. That's just kinda of my view. I, I think there's just generally a close tie fight. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be close. I like I, I don't have much problems with the lines. Like I I think it should be tight. Um Pennington and Renault. Um I'm not, I'm not touching this fight. I guess Pennington, uh, she's younger, can get some of the top position going, and I kind of so, so I, I understand why she's a favorite. Wouldn't better at minus one seventy five though. Um, I think the feat is probably pretty competitive, and I don't know. I, I just and I feel like this is a I don't know. I, I'd rather play. Like, if you're going to throw minus 175 on Pennington, I just feel like it's it'd be better to play the minus 285 goes to decision because I don't possibly see how either of these girls get a finish here. It's kind of dangerous moment to moment. But yeah, Renari hasn't really won a round against UFC-level competition in years. Like, yeah, Pennington's not great, but at least she has a process. Yeah, agreed. Like, you have a clear kind of idea of what Pennington's trying to do. Like, I'm actually kind of surprised. Like, early in the week, I was like, eh, minus 140 Pennington might be value, but now it's kind of got crunched on. Um, yeah, because I, I, I'd probably lean Pennington's combination of age. Like, women's don't think age matters quite as much just because, like, scientifically, it's less of an age. It's, it's off the curve. Yeah, but... It's like women's last and Renault run around, run around. Even against Kunda Sky, like, she won around three, but that's due to the nose kind of exploding in their favor. Zingano well, and just... she 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 did beat the crap out of her in round three, though. Like even without the nose, but I uh, yeah, no, I no, I I I feel you. It's kind of like she can get taken down here, and she has less. She has more pro- or uh, Renault can get taken down here. Pennington definitely has more process. Like I feel you. And like yeah, Zingano shut her out. McMahon, <laughs> McMahon, McMahon. Bernardo yeah. not very good. And had more success than she probably should have, considering how big a 
underdog she was. Betch <laughs> kind of just, you know, Betch Kahay just kind of took rounds by just being present. It's yeah. just some, she just doesn't really win rounds, which is just, you know, it's women's, it's women's MMA and you don't win rounds. It's just not a great look. Yeah, they're both like low output and they both don't land a ton of strikes. Uh, or, or, and they, they both don't land a ton of strikes and they both don't absorb a lot. Like, I just kind of, and I, I just think this is going to go to a decision a lot of the time. So I feel like um, I would just need a better price on Pennington minus 175. I do think she should be favored, though. But that's still saying she wins 60, what, 63, 64% of the time. That's still kind of like somewhat steep in a fight that I expect to go the distance. But um, I think Pennington's volume numbers are maybe a bit under underplayed because like she had two sort of long fights where she's got the shit beat now by superior striker. True. I agree. Like, you know, GDR, GDR, if take the GDR and Nunes fights out to first of volume, I think, you know, she's not no volume. No, no. Yeah, just not great either. Like, she's, I don't know. Um, no, I, but I, no, I feel you. Like, I, I just, I, I, I think, she, I, th- I think the line's fine, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, I think she should be slightly favored. Um, yeah. Um, Emmett and Burgos? This this is tough. Uh, what do you think here? I've got Ents by KO at I think, plus 104. Um, Burgos should win the rounds, but it's just, there's too good a chance that Burgos just gets nuked on at some point. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much it. My book, like, Burgos, way busier. I can't really see how Emmett wins the decision without some sort of crazy two knockdowns or the round sort of deal. Yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... Um, I do, I have like a slightly, like a, not like a hot take view here, but I have like a little bit of a different view. I, I do think Emmett has a better chance to win by decision than people think because, uh, he actually has really good striking defense. Like it's 67%. And I know like, like he, he generally just kind of lowers volume. Like Michael Johnson usually lands a lot of strikes and it was 24 to 22 in strikes until the third round. And it was like. So, so I I could see Emmett winning rounds if his power kind of scares off Burgos and Burgos can't land as much as he usually does. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like I, I still like if it goes to decision, I would want to be on the Burgos side, you know. But I'm just saying I don't think it's completely out of the question for him to win a decision. But I do favor Burgos there. But uh, then it, it's funny, like it's weird because. Burgos actually has good, um, he absorbs a lot of strikes because he kind of goes into a firefight. It's because he lands 7.09 strikes per minute and absorbs 5.34. So, like, that's a lot of strikes absorbed. So, you'll obviously be a little nervous going against Emmett because Emmett has pop. But uh, his striking defense is actually good. It's sixty-two percent, and if you look at his str- head strike defense, it's actually pr- like even better. Like he he, he gen- generally like doesn't get hit to the head all that much compared to like the attempts that are coming his way. So um, so I don't know. Like I I guess yeah yeah. I, so I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but I'm just. I, I guess like Burgos, a lot of people claim he has no defense, and it's like I actually think he has defense. It's just he kind of goes into a fight um, where a lot of output is being thrown in general, you know. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, like I, I think I, I favor Burgos here, but obviously the power threat is a little scary. Yeah, pretty much my view. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, if I got to my head, I probably would play Burgos. It's just. I feel like, you know, he, he, his striking defense is less problematic than it might seem on just not numerically, but also the yeah. fact that Emmett hits fucking hard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I got you. You can't just go by numbers all the time. Like, I I feel you. Um, like, you know, Burgos can avoid the majority of the strikes coming at him, but, like, Emmett, more than a lot of other guys, only needs one. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, I totally agree. I do think Burgos could knock out Emmett as well, though, you know, yeah, um, 100%. like I, I think I think Burgos is a little underrated as a hitter. Uh, like I think he gets a little harder than people give him credit for. So I could see that happening too. 
Um, and he works the body well. He works the body. He works the body well. You know, he's, he's very fairly complete. Like I'm playing unit lands by KO, so I'm just rooting for KO either way, pretty much. I, I think that's a good line. Um, yeah. I just like, feel I, like I, I feel like Burgos won't do the. I, I just feel like Burgos won't get scared off. I feel like <laughs> that's just not his attitude. So I feel like it's going to be high output, which means a KO is very much in play here. Pretty much, like I. I it's probably just second round. Berg- Emmett will start slowing down on the sheer onslaught, then Burgos will just roundly get zapped by a massive nuke. <laughs> but yeah, yeah Burgos, sure. Burgos should, should dominate minutes, and like, just pillars off clear would definitely favour Burgos. It's just the nuke. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so the last fight, Blades and Volkov. Um... I get it. Like takedowns should be there. Don't I don't think we really need to discuss that part. But I still don't like the idea of like even blades and like a parlay or anything when I don't favor him on the feet. You know, like if you're if you're like this big of a favorite, I want you to be better everywhere. You know, and like I don't want there to ever be a chance where you maybe get stuck in an area of the fight where I don't favor you. You know. I guess that's kind of like my main read on this is I expect Blades' takedowns to be there and stuff, but I do think Volkov, um, like I favor him if it stays standing. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And as far as the takedown defense goes, I think, like I actually kind of, like I know Verdum took Volkov down a few times, but I actually did like some of the stuff Volkov did on some of the takedown defense. And it was that was that fight was a while ago, so maybe he's improved a little bit to where I could maybe see him stuffing a few takedowns to give him some windows. But I don't know. Blaze just historically lands a shitload of takedowns, so you, you kind of have to be you kind of have to respect that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, also, the question is like, what can Volkov really do with a standing window? It's not yeah. like Volkov is gonna just hit him once and get like yeah. Volkov is gonna most likely need an attrition finish. Blades is yeah. very good for heavyweight and just he can take a lot of punishment and yeah, you know, I I can't see him getting stuck on the feet long enough to not find a takedown or something. It's my view. Yeah. Like I personally not a huge blades fan. I'm playing a little bit of the over, it starts around three at the uh, minus one ten. Yeah. Because I feel like Volkov has solid guard potential for heavyweight. Um I don't really like Blades top game a lot. Um Volkov doesn't really gas. So I just feel like Volkov plays on for a bit, but yeah, generally just Blade should eventually just. I I, Volk, I just can't really see how, yeah Volk, I can't really see Volk's being conditioned apart from like a crazy head kick or something because I think Blades is durable enough. It's just it's kind of like the it's a morale question. It's just like it's nice that you can outstrike him a bit, but like unless you're going to stop him, what does it really matter? Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. You're you're probably right. Like I mean, yeah, I, like I think Blades is going to probably run through him. You know. Yeah, like, if Volkov somehow pulls it I do like Volkov. If Volkov pulls it off, I'm, I'm happy for it. I am actually cheering for Volkov, but it's just... I, did, I just... Ha- pick it every way. The Blade style is just... How do you really deal with the amount of, head, of that amount of takedowns unless you can knock them out? And I just it's, don't think... I it's funny because... Think do it. Because I don't even think Blades is that good of a wrestler. It's just he's a good... It's just he is for that division, you know? Um, like, who's that, who's that one heavyweight, Daniel... A Malana, I, I, I can never I'm say that. I'm an I'm an yeah, like, like you know, Blades went 0 for 13 on takedowns in that fight. It's like if you yeah. put Blades at welterweight, he wouldn't be taking down a lot of those guys, you know. Um, so yeah, but I mean, it's not welterweight; it's heavyweight, and there's not as many fighters at heavyweight, so the talent pool is just not as good. And Volkov, just the entire way he fights, is just very takedownable. Like, yeah, I don't mind his instincts and grappling off his back, but, like, just his fundamental sort of height, his stance, everything just plays against him in a lot of ways. Yeah, for sure. Um, Cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I think we're on the same page on that one. But, yeah, like, I... There's, like, a lot of cards, a lot of fights that have been announced for future cards, too. But, um... Yeah, but, but I mean, we can talk about that next week. But like, I guess, what are your main plays for for this card? Uh, medium or Miller, 
small, medium on Hubbard, small, medium on Volcom Blades, um, over two rounds. So I don't really have a huge amount of action play. All yeah. the stuff I do have is the price has been like Barrio, Piotr, Under, I'm pretty heavy on, but that price has been vaporized, so don't bother. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm kind of like figuring out plays still as well. Like nothing jumps out. I like nothing jumps out. The next few, there's like the Usman Burns card and even like the Hooker Poye card. I think there's like more that jump out, out of the page to me, you know, where I feel like I'll have actually like five straight bets amongst those cards, you know, but, um, yeah, I got to kind of still think about it, but all right, cool, man. Um, yeah, so- sorry that we got this out a little later to the audience and to you too, Gugabe. Sorry, I've been busy this week. Yeah, it's all good. Some of us have to have um, productive employment. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll see you, man. It's all good. All right, catch up. Thanks, Leslie.